NAB 2024. Let's talk about the noteworthy trends and technologies I've seen that I think are going to have a profound impact on us as creative going forward in the coming years. This is Art is Right. NAB is National Association of Broadcasters, and they are this organization that put together their annual convention in Las Vegas every year. A few really great thing about this organization in general is that I don't believe they are run by a large corporation. They are pretty much this group of individuals or this organization that really is there to support the craft of video. And they run the whole spectrum from broadcasting to full Hollywood production to just content creation like myself. And it's just really great to go out and see the gears of what the other discipline and videos professionals are really doing. Now this year convention, they have really expanded the footprint to the entire Las Vegas Convention Center. And I would say it's really now getting extremely close to the pre-pandemic time. That's really great to see because over 1,300 vendors were there. Now, if you register for the full conference pass, there are different tracks you can go to, but there are talks, there are panels, there are different interviews that you can really sit in on. It's an amazing place to learn and, like I said, see technologies. My big theme from last year NAB was storage, and this year is the same, because it is a thread that runs across all of us creative. Whether you're a small creator like myself or a large Hollywood production, you need to think about what type of memory cards are you going to capture the footage from the camera? How are you going to store that footage while you're editing? And how are you going to archive your final project? This is where a solution such as a NAS come in. Now, I've talked about this company a little bit during my CES visit, and I want to give them a shout out again because they have launched a successful Kickstarter campaign, and that is Ugreen with their NAS Sync series. They're not only releasing one or two units, they're actually releasing a whole lineup that runs on hard drive. You can put SSD in there, but they also have slots for NVMe as well for caching and also for live storage. There's so many different ways to configure them. In fact, they also have a small and compact model that just pretty much runs on NVMe also. Now, I think that would be really interesting for anyone that needs a smaller, lighter device that doesn't have any moving parts they can take on the road with them. That would be really great, but their NAS lineup seems very interesting because it comes standard with a lot of features such as dual 10 gigabit ethernet built into the NAS. I no longer need to get an expansion card it's really forward thinking than many of the other companies that I've seen. They also have Thunderbolt built into their NAS. Now this Thunderbolt, as I found out from them, is not really to use the NAS as a direct attached storage or a DAS at all. It's only going to work if you attach a hard drive in to copy the files. But even if we can do that and we can get a higher copying speed than some of the other brands that are on the market right now, I think that would just be even fantastic. So for us creative, I think this is a win-win scenario because they are packing a lot of features into their NAS at the same price point. What we're going to really get is a competitor in this market now that's really going to either push the price down or push the feature up or both of those. And I'm excited to see this. So I'm going to be getting their NAS into the studio in the next few weeks or so. I'm going to be giving you a video preview of what I think about their NAS. And if it's anything promising at all, I think this is going to be a really great product that has the potential to disrupt where this industry is right now. All right. Next up is Seagate. They have announced a new, I would say, combination of hard drive technology called Mosaic 3. Now, this is really interesting because some of you may have heard about different storage technology and hard drive and everything. I still think that today in the world we live in that, yes, NVMEs are there, but they're there for a specific purpose when we need to access data fast. But when we need to do something in long term storage or we have a lot of data, hard drive is still going to give you the best solution as of now. And what's really nice about Mosaic 3 is that it's a combination of all these different technologies that expand of some of the technologies you may have heard about before. So with hard drive technologies, we have for the past 20 years or so with bits going perpendicular with hard drive companies now putting helium inside to reduce air drag when the disk is spinning. But the problem that we come up to today is that our bits are so densely packed together that they have a tendency to randomly flip between ones and zeros and zeros and ones. That's bad because we can now get data corruption. So Seagate have come up with this new thing that is an extension on Hammer. You might have heard that technology before, which is a heat magnetic resonance. So pretty much what it does is that it heats up the platter before it writes the data so that the data becomes more permanent. But they have now combined a whole group of technology together. And a few of them 
are going to be as follows. Number one, there is a super lattice platinum alloy media. This is a new disc they're using. And there's also a plasmonic writer. So pretty much what they are really doing is they're heating up the disc so that they create a plasma state before they write the data to the platter itself. There's a Gen 7 Spintronic reader that is supposed to read these data has been written through two and also a new 12 millimeter integrated control this is why they call it the mosaic 3 plus right now it's currently in the exos drive they're in data center but in my conversation with them they were saying that this technology is going to come down to the consumer products where we can now really get that in about a year maybe two or so and i think that's really great to see because some of the benefit we're going to really get from this is that we're going to get denser hard drive at either a cheaper price or a much higher density and they're able to do all this while keeping the package the same in a three and a half inch drive same power consumption so all these are really on the up and up and i'm really super excited to see this technology comes to drive because these are going to be the drive that are going to be in our nas now i think this is super exciting all right in addition to this let's continue on the theme of storage owc have announced cf express type a 4.0. Now, this is really cool because it doubles the speed of the current Sea of Express there on the market today. Granted, the cameras can't access that speed. However, you're going to see the benefit when you're copying files from that card to the computer. You're going to get a higher throughput on that. So that I think that's really great. It comes at a lower price point. Now we are seeing the price for CF Express Type A media going to sub $1 per gigabyte. That is really great because so far what we have seen is above the $1 mark. The fact that they're able to bring the price down that low, I think is great. Their cards are also compatible with Energize software, which I've talked about before. It is a software that allows you to go in and monitor how your SSD is performing. You can format it to factory and everything. And out of any companies during the memory cards out there, especially with CFXS Type A, I haven't seen any company at all that's really doing it on this specific CFXS Type A card. So to me, that's something really great to see. Do note though that you have to use OWC either doc or card reader to access that feature. Now, they also branded this card as a pro, and I thought that was rather interesting because, you know, the performance doubled. This can technically be an ultra, but they still have the ultra moniker kind of reserved for something else. I'm not sure if they're going to release an ultra model that's even a higher performance one or a higher throughput or something, but that would be something very interesting to see. One thing to note about the Type A card is that all of them will ship with a Type B adapter or caddy that will enable you to use that card in a Type B card reader. They also introduced a couple of storage solutions as well, such as a small USB drive, but I think the notable one would be the USB 4 NVMe enclosure. You can buy that as just the enclosure alone, or you can also choose different pre-configured NVMe stick on the inside as well with different capacity that are supposed to get up to 3000 megabytes per second. Now that's really good. In addition to that, they also have an enclosure that will now take eight NVMEs. So you can set them to RAID and get a super high speed and large storage pool for your on the go project needs. Those are some of the great things to see. There are other products from them as well, but in regards to storage, I think those are the ones that really stand out. Lexar has also, you know, with me stopping by their booth, announced CF Express Type A and Type B 4.0 standard as well. They don't have the pricing on yet, so it'll be really interesting to see where this whole thing is going to go. And, you know, one of the things I might end up doing is buy all these cards and just let, run some tests on them and see how they compare against each other. I think that would be really interesting. They also have a few other things as well that I think was really cool because they have a new portable card reader that allows you to put in two different type of card readers in there and you can you know it also has a battery that you can take on the road with you and they also have a desktop card reader that runs on thunderbolt and it has six different bays that you can plug in the adapter for different type of cards you can run them through these bays or you can run the card reader as an individual device but if you want to just plug in numerous card at any given time or an ssd in combination with that, I think this is a pretty good solution they have. And one of the things that really stand out at their booth was the aluminum all metal cart. Now, I thought that was really neat. Another memory card and SSD company next storage that I mentioned before is also coming up with their own CF Express Type A. So, I don't believe this is going to be based on the 
4.0 standard, but we're going to see. And even if it's on the previous standard, let's see where their price point is and how the performance is compared to the current one that's on the market. Because I think it's very interesting to have more options. As I said before, more options better because we're gonna get lower price point overall over time. And that's a great thing. I also have a chance to visit QNAP booth where they were showing the 25 gigabits networking, which requires a lot of equipment and it can be pricey. But if you need that kind of speed, well, there is a solution for you. Now, what I'm more interested in from QNAP is their TBS H574TX. This is their NVMe NAS. And what's really amazing is that there are five slots for NVMe. You can hot swap them. You can take this on the road with you. And I think this is a device that provides a really compelling option for a large, fast storage pool that is fairly portable. Now, what I really want to do is take a look at the options they have and compare this to the Ugreen option because there are certain differences that I can already see that are going to be pros and cons of each system. So I think it would be really great to find out and also find out where their price point are on each of them as well. The next thing I want to talk about is trend. And I'm going to say this, that AI was mostly subtle throughout the entire show. There are some themes of AI here and there. I think it's more so in how you would use that technology more than anything else. But it's not like the photo convention where every other booth that I walk up to is AI calling, AI editing, AI enhancement. We're not really seeing that quite as much with many of the companies that are there. Here, you still see companies showing products that are really genuine, just like enhancing the creative process overall. Now, there are two linear editing companies I want to give a shout out to or the software. One of them is Adobe Premiere Pro, and I got a chance to see their AI generative fill beta on stage, and I think it's really neat. For a small content creator like myself, if I need to fix a video and post and have AI fill the frame for me, or generate a quick B-roll, I think this is something really great. Now, I've also seen arguments of this that many of creators does not necessarily like this because it takes away from the creators themselves. And I could really see that argument as well, but I think this is one of those things that we're gonna have to just play it out and see where this whole thing is going because Adobe is leaning into this hard. Whereas for instance, another company, Blackmagic, it's not really doing this quite as much with AI. So what they have announced is the beta of DaVinci Resolve 19 that has a lot of improvement with color grading and everything, but the AI features that they introduce has been mostly focused on sound and some of the enhancement for sound and everything else. Now, this is something that Premiere has been doing for quite some time already, but again, more competition, right? Now, I'm going to say this though, that seeing the new color grading feature in Resolve and what you can do with all those nodes, I mean, it's definitely on an error level that it's gonna take Premiere some time for them to build that up, but if they can, you know, it's giving us more options, more software to really pick and do our workflow. And we're gonna really see where this whole AI thing is gonna go in the next few months down the road. I think it's gonna be very interesting. If anything at all, it's going to democratize these type of video creations and there are going to be more creators coming in. And that can be an exciting thing in itself too. Let's talk about Sony now. I have visited their booth. They have a large presence there. And one of the big things they were showing is virtual production, which is really cool to have a spaceman coming out. But the one big device they, that I've seen at their booth that has a lot of emphasis on is their PDT, Portable Data Transfer Device. So it's pretty much just an Android device that is designed to link with cameras, designed to link with their video cameras or their FX camera for that matter. And if you're in broadcast, you can just have a few of these devices, get a few extra box and be able to broadcast wirelessly to a van that's sitting outside a stadium or something like that. Or even if you're a photographer that is shooting for press, for instance, what you can simply do is upload that file directly to the agency so that it can get published right away. And you can also annotate sound and it will upload everything as well, including all the IPTAC data. I think that's a really cool nifty device that Sony have come up with. And for the price point right now, I think it's also pretty good as well. So something interesting that they're introducing there. I've also got a chance to see a new firmware sneak peek on one of their video cameras as well. I'm not gonna say much beyond that, but it's really cool what they have coming down the road in the next few months. And lastly, I have a chance to see their $30,000 double LED mastering display that I think is really cool. I mean, how many times are you gonna see that in person, right? And NAP is one of those shows that you can really see 
those things there. The other big players in the video camera and also broadcasting worlds are out there. Panasonic, Aries was there showing their light, their different cameras. Canon's there with their numerous lenses, virtual production, and also an out of space lens, which is really huge in a plexiglass case. Really great to see. And Nikon with their booth and a recent red acquisition. I thought red was going to play a more prominent presence in their booth. They're representative from Red there. Most of them are giving out interviews about where Nikon and Red thinks they're really going with the whole thing, but we didn't really see a whole entire camera lineup from Red that you can really just go in and just play with them. I wish that would be really great in addition to the Nikon mirrorless that they have showing there, but you know, it's just the start of something, right? We're gonna have to see where they go with this. A few other companies that I wanna give a shout out to, one of them is Atlas Lens, being able to see their anamorphic lens in person. It's just really cool. At Sony Booth, they also have the Atlas Lens mounted with an adapter on an FX3 as well. That was just really awesome to see with the, the footage D squeeze and everything. Yes, their lenses are expensive and I wish I would do have one in the studio to play with a little bit, but I really have no use for that. But nonetheless, it's just a really great thing to see. Atomos was also showing all of their recorders, including their latest device, which is an adapter that you can link it up to your iPhone and have your iPhone be the monitor, be the recorder for all these ProRes thing that will record directly to the iPhone memory. Because on an iPhone with USB Type-C, you already have the really great screen with a high nit brightness. And the fact that you also have fast memory on the inside there, you can really record directly from the camera to your phone. I don't think this is you know, necessarily something you're gonna use in a big production. However, you need to be light, nimble on the road, or if you need something last minute, it may not be a bad device to have. Something very interesting there that I got a chance to talk to them about. Many different lighting companies are there, and I got a chance to stop by Amaran and Aperture a little bit to see some of the different lighting, the LED light they have in the lineup. KinoFlow was also out there, and one of the other companies I really want to see their product for a long time is Shatler, particularly their flow system. And I'm going to say this, like, it's expensive, but it's really awesome. Now, I'm using Shatler in my studio, but it's not anywhere near the flow system that they have, how you can just pretty much lift the lever up and all the, you know, the tripod leg would go to the right position position and also like the right height that you want right away. I think those are really cool. But being able to see that in person, I think is great. A few other last companies that I want to really shout out to. One of them is Sonnet, seeing the different cards they have as an option for production professionals in general. Sonnet has all these different, I would say, rather unique hardware that answers to a very niche within a niche inside video or photography production, but they do have those products. In fact, they have announced a new enclosure that has dual Thunderbolt connection, so you don't have to like really split the bandwidth anymore. You can link both of those up to the computer, and I believe it will see as like two separate connections, so you can utilize the full speed of all the card that's plugged into that box. I think that's really neat. And lastly, Laowa was there and I got a chance to see their 10 millimeter lens, the rectilinear one that will work with autofocus and Sony. Um, we're going to see if we can get a loaner to test that out. I am really excited about that. And as usual, BH, my good friend, is always there, BH Photo, and they have a huge booth there. I got a chance to meet up and catch up with a lot of friends and they're also giving really great deals at the show as well. So yeah, that is pretty much NAB 2024 as a wrap up. You know, let me know what you think about some of the things that I've seen. If you're, you know, these things are interesting to you, what do you think are going to be the trend changing things that I've talked about before or something that I've missed? Let me know in the comments below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit the bell if you're new and in our retrust.